talk to you about a couple of things. And, um, you know, I was, at, I was in Hilo for the Merry Monarch. And at that time, I was, I was well, I go to the Merry Monarch quite a few t- times, maybe about 30. <laughs> That's a little bit much. But I go to the Merry Monarch quite a few times. And what I notice is that I find myself always uh, having these favorite this favorite people that, uh, or halal that I like to uh, cheer for, you know? So there's the male halal and then there's the f- female halal. And I'm always going, I know they're going to win, you know? But what inevitably happens is that they don't win. And then I keep going, huh? How did I know? I mean, how, how did they win? You know, because I'm always going, I, I keep thinking that the ones that I chose were going to win. And I think that many of us are like that, is that when we choose things, we, we seem to think that what we choose is the right one. But that's not really who the winner is. So, of course, you know, I sit, after I sit there on Saturdays and I scratch my head, I, uh, I come away going, Maybe I don't know how to judge people, and maybe that's not my job to judge people. And so, uh, you know, every year I attend also the Nahoku Hanohano Awards. It's a music um, awards at the Hawaii Convention Center. And if I'm lucky, sometimes I'm chosen to win one of these things. You know, and of course, there are several church members who, um, who go there. And this particular year, you know, we had some church members like Kimo Kahuano that you see here, um, the Diaconate Chair, Lehua Galateria, uh, Kaeo Lindsay, uh, and of course, our Board of Trustee Chair, uh, Senator Brickwood Galateria. You know, and we were so excited about it, and I know that he was excited because they even made him go up on stage and sing this year. So, you know, you, when, you thi- when you think that you're going to go up on stage, everybody's saying, oh, pff, he's an automatic winner because they only pick the winners to entertain at this Hoku Awards. And so his category is coming up. And after these tense moments, an announcer steps to the microphone and, uh, you know, they're naming the list for the thing. And he says over here, and the 2019 Nahoku Hano Hano for Hawaiian Single of the Year goes to, and he fumbles with it, and he says, He Aloha Waiao, Waipuna, Pokey Records. And immediately, hey, what happened? And immediately, Brickwood's son, Sean, puts his hand up, and he goes, Dad, you lost. (laughs) I mean, you lost. What's up with that? How could you lose? (laughs) And and Brickwood, the only thing he can say is, I don't know, only God knows. And I think that is the thing about life, is that only God knows. Only God knows what's going to happen to us. But God knows because God knew even before we were formed in the womb. God knows who we are even before the earth was born, even before the universe was formed. God knows us. And as we see in our um, chapter here in Jeremiah, the word of the Lord says to me, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I set you apart. I anointed you. I do not, you know, and then you can ask, I do not know how to speak, for I am too young. And the Lord says, do not say I'm too young. You just go where I tell you, and I command you, and and I will give you the words. And I think that that is a lot of the problems that we have, is we try to put God's words aside and say, I don't think that's what I really wanted to say, Lord. So I think I'm going to say my own thing, but I'm going to use your name anyway. The Lord made me do it, you know. God made me say it. However, passage after passage tells us that God is so wonderful, that God is so magnificent that he consecrated you and appointed you even before we 
had even thought that you would be existing in this world. And so in Psalms 139, you know, there's this, there's this psalm. And it also says in Psalms, as well as in um, Jeremiah, For you formed my inner parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you. How wonderful are your works, O Lord. You know, you, you have done so many things for me, so many things that are countless, more countless than the sands of time. And, you know, there's, there's this word called... Um, Lehu lehu, which means what? Population or the people or just a whole bunch of things, the multitude. And if you take lehu lehu and you split it, um, the word lehu is, means 400,000. And when you do the reduplication of this word and you make it um, lehu lehu, means 400,000 times 400,000. And um, I couldn't count that high, so I had to use my, my calculator. And it came out to 160 billion. So the word lehu lehu, it means 160 billion. A mano mano. So mano, that's another number that means 4,000. And mano mano means 4,000 times 4,000, which means 16 million. So if we say lehu lehu a mano mano, it's 160 billion. 16 million. And what it's just telling us is that God and the, and, the, and the breadth and scope of God's knowledge and the breadth and scope of God's love is so immense that it is as countless as the sands of time. And so the psalmist in verse 1, um, in chapter 139, says that you are greater than all of the sands of time because you do so much more for me, my Lord. And Speaking of my Lord, a dear friend of mine had written this song off of Psalms 129, uh, 139, and it says, For, oh my God, you know me so well. You know my going out and you know my coming in. You are precious to me and your thoughts are so dear. If I try to count them all, they would outnumber all the sands. And if I rise on the wings of the dawn, and go to the far side of the sea, no matter where I go, your love will comfort me. Because you're my God, and I'm so proud. And I want to sing about you. And it, praise your name out loud, because I want the world to know that you're my God. Jesus, my Lord. So well, you know my going out, you discern my lying down, you're precious to me, your thoughts are so dear. If I try to count them all, they outnumber all the sands. If I rise on wings of dawn, go through the far side of the sea, no matter where I go, your love will comfort me, you're my God, I'm proud, I want to sing about you, do your name out loud, I want And I'm your precious child You're my God And I'm your precious child And the psalmist keeps telling us over and over again You're my God, you treat me so well You love me, you know me, you know my in and out 
There is nothing that I can do. And you know what that reminds me of? Adam and Eve. Because in the beginning, Adam and Eve walked with the Lord. They talked with the Lord. And they were not afraid and they were not ashamed with the Lord because they ran naked all over the place. And they didn't care because God knew them in and out and they knew God in and out. And they had a relationship with God. And they had everything in the world to be happy about. But what did they do? They picked this small little area that had a tiny little tree with a couple of fruits on it, and they had the whole world to go and, and sup and dine with the Lord. And instead, they put their, their mana or their thoughts onto the little tree. How crazy is that? It's because they thought, I know you, Lord, but I think I'm going to try to find me and I'm going to go search my path. And sometimes we always seem to look outside rather than inside because we have to remember that we are the temple of God. And if we are the temple of God, where does God exist? Within us. We are the temple of God, and God exists within us. So everything we need, everything we need is with God. And where is God? God is inside of us, so we have to look inside. But it seems like Adam and Eve forgot where God was. And as they were, as, when they ate the fruit of knowledge, because God knows everything, and so what? Did Adam and Eve say, I want to know everything too? And so when they ate the fruit, what happened to them? Of course they got to know things. But then they also got to know that they were ashamed of each other and they were ashamed of of looking the way they were in front of God. Whereas before, you know our little kids, our little kids, you can run around all naked inside the house with your little kids and they don't care. But funny when they turn 13, all of a sudden you got to put your clothes on. Yeah, you laugh because that's the problem. Man, when you, your kids are little, who cares? And then all of a sudden they go to school and then they get knowledge. And then when they get knowledge, what happens? Oh, now they're shame. Now they have to put things on. Oh, mom, don't look. Oh, I have to close my door. And that is the thing that we keep trying to think about the Lord, is that the Lord knows all of our dealings. The Lord knows all of our coming out. And how are we supposed to know the Lord? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, God talks about the love. Because God's love is so immense that he even puts it down in these things. It, it describes love, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is love. And what is love? God puts it down of what love is not. Love is not boastful or arrogant or rude. Do you know people who are boastful? Do you know people who are arrogant or rude? Again, God says, love does not insist on its own ways, and it isn't irritable or resentful. Of course, none of us sitting in this room are ever irritated or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. I'm so glad we do nothing wrong. And Paul, the Apostle Paul instructs, love is not like this. Love doesn't put down. Love lifts up. Aren't you glad we lift up everything in the name of God? Love doesn't cut people to pieces. Love binds the broken in spirit. Love doesn't step on others in order to build oneself up. It actually stoops down to serve. And so pondering on this message from Paul, I can't help to think, what happened to our world? What happened to our world when God had first set it spinning, had first given birth to all of us, had first planted that seed of love in all of us? But in his wisdom, God also planted the seed of choice. 
Because we get to freely give and we get to freely live according to the word of God or according to our own ways. And that is our choice to live. And so how do we, as people of God, choose to live today? You know, my mind keeps going back to this song that I heard um, a long, long time ago. And it, the, the words go something like this. Think of your fellow man and lend them a helping hand. Because you've got to put a, a little love back in your heart. And if you can remember this song or the melody, maybe you can sing along with me. Because I think that's what we keep forgetting about love. Because we always talk negative. And so we believe the negative. Like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. You end up doing it. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. You end up losing. Let's start with the positive. And this is one of those songs that helps us to think about the positive of life. So maybe we can think more positive about it. Think of your fellow man, give them a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. See, it's getting late, oh, please don't hesitate. Put a little love in your heart and the world will be a better place and the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait and see. Next slide. <laughs> Another day goes by, and still the children cry. Put a little love in your heart. You want the world to know we won't let hatred grow. Put a little love in your heart, and the world will be a better. be blessed. May you know that the God of wonder and the God of love and the God divine is the God of love. And love knows no boundaries. Love is always kind and love is gentle. And so as the people of God, we walk with kindness. We walk with love. And we walk with the decency of loving ourselves and loving those that are called neighbors that are around us. And if we can do that, if love can permeate through this world, then there will never be a word called hate. Amen? 
Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen.